Hi, this is Edward Awad. This is the last video in a series of four videos on photosynthesis. In the previous videos, we talked about the light-dependent reactions and the Kelvin cycle. In this video, we will focus on the phenomenon of photorespiration and what mechanisms certain types of plants possess in order to minimize this phenomenon. The enzyme Rubisco is a large protein consisting of eight large peptide chains and eight small peptide chains. The active sites are found in the large subunits, with one active site per subunit. Despite the relatively large number of active sites, Rubisco is both slow and inefficient. While the turnover rate of most enzymes is in the order of several thousand molecules of substrates per second, Rubisco can process only 3 to 10 molecules of carbon dioxide per second, making it a very slow enzyme. Rubisco also is inefficient, as it can bind oxygen in its active site. When oxygen binds to the active site of Rubisco, it combines oxygen with ribulose bisphosphate, resulting in the formation of only one 3 phosphoglycerate. The other molecule formed by this reaction is 2 phosphoglycerate. 2 phosphoglycerate cannot be used by the Calvin cycle. Plant cells process 2 phosphoglycerate in another pathway that results in the production of carbon dioxide and the consumption of ATP, causing a reduction in the level of formation of sugars by photosynthesis. Recall that when CO2 is fixed by Rubisco, the result is the formation of two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate. This reaction, by which Rubisco fixes oxygen, is known as photorespiration. Like aerobic respiration, photorespiration consumes oxygen and produces carbon dioxide, but it differs from aerobic respiration by consuming ATP as opposed to producing ATP. Carbon dioxide fixation by Rubisco is favored over photorespiration when CO2 concentration inside the cells is high and oxygen concentration is low. Normally, carbon dioxide enters leaves or other plant tissues via openings known as stomata, which is the plural form of the word stoma, which means mouth-like opening. By the same token, oxygen produced as a result of photosynthesis exits plant tissues into the atmosphere via these stomata. However, keeping the stomata open all the time causes water to be lost from leaves, which is why plants control the opening and the closing of their stomata. When conditions are hot and dry, many plants must keep their stomata closed to prevent water loss. This causes buildup of oxygen in the leaves as a result of light-dependent reactions. The buildup of oxygen in plant tissues results in photorespiration. Plants that are adapted to dry or hot conditions have lower and even negligible level of photorespiration when compared to plants that are not adapted to such conditions. There are two major types of plants that experience extremely low levels of photorespiration when it is dry or hot. These are the C4 plants and the CAM plants. So how are these plants capable of reducing the level of photorespiration in dry or hot conditions? Three key factors are behind the coping mechanisms of C4 and CAM plants. And these are, first, the opening and closing daily activities of their stomata. Second, the way photosynthetic cells are arranged in their leaves. And third, in addition to Rubisco, these plants possess a second enzyme involved in carbon dioxide fixation. This enzyme is known as PEP carboxylase. Let's look first at leaf cell arrangement and stomatal activity in plants with high levels of photorespiration in dry or hot conditions. These plants are generally called as C3 plants. C3 plants are the most common and the most efficient at photosynthesis only in cool, wet climates. Examples of C3 plants are tomato, rice, and potato plants. If we zoom in on the leaf of a C3 plant, we see that there are two main types of photosynthetic cells, the mesophyll cells and the bundle sheath cells. Mesophyll cells fill most of the space between the upper and the lower epidermal layers of the leaf. The word meso means in the middle, and the word fill means leaf. Mesophyll cells are rich in chloroplasts, 
and make lots of rubisco. The reason why they are called C3 plants is that the product of carbon dioxide fixation is the three carbon compound, three phosphoglycerate. The bundle sheath cells surround veins and they have fewer chloroplasts and do not make rubisco and therefore do not fix carbon dioxide. C3 plants keep their stomata open during the day and close them at night in order to minimize water loss. On hot days, however, stomata of C3 plants close to prevent water loss. This causes oxygen to build up inside the leaves and for the respiration to occur. If C3 plants are exposed to prolonged duration of hot temperatures or dry conditions, photosynthesis remains low and photorespiration high, causing the plants to suffer and die. When we examine the leaves of C4 plants, we see that the mesophyll cells do not make rubisco. Instead, they make the enzyme phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase or PEP carboxylase. What's so special about this enzyme PEP carboxylase? First, it has no oxygenase activity, meaning it does not bind oxygen to its active sites. Second, unlike Rubisco, it has high affinity to carbon dioxide, meaning it binds efficiently to CO2, even in the presence of high concentrations of oxygen. And third, it fixes CO2 by binding it to the three carbon compound phosphoenol pyruvate, or PEP, to form the four carbon compound oxaloacetate. And this is the reason why we call these plants C4. Since mesophyll cells do not make rubisco, they do not make sugars. Their role is to fix and store carbon dioxide. The bundle sheath cells of C4 plants make rubisco only and therefore are responsible for making sugars. They do not make, however, PEP carboxylase. Notice here that many of the mesophyll cells are in close proximity to the bundle sheath cells and are connected to each other by plasmodismata. On hot or dry days, stomata remain partially closed. Since PEP carboxylase is not affected by the buildup of oxygen inside the leaf, it keeps fixing CO2. This results in the accumulation of oxaloacetate in the mesophyll cells. Oxaloacetate diffuses into the bundle C cells where it is decarboxylated, meaning CO2 is removed from oxaloacetate, thus regenerating the phosphoenol pyruvate. This causes the level of CO2 to remain high in bundle C cells where Rubisco is located. In other words, in C4 plants, carbon dioxide is fixed and stored in mesophyll cells while the Kelvin cycle occurs in the bundle sheath cells, thus keeping photorespiration negligible. The C4 pathway is found in many monocots such as sugarcane, corn, and grasses. CAM plants are adapted to dry desert conditions. Example of these plants are the succulent plants, the cactus plants, and the lilies. They are named CAM plants because they possess a characteristic metabolic pathway known as crassulation acid metabolism, or CAM. Being desert, desert plants, CAM plants conserve water by keeping their stomata closed during the day and opening, opening them only at night. Mesophyll cells of CAM plants make PEP carboxylase, in addition to Rubisco. At night, when stomata are open, CAM plants fix carbon dioxide in mesophyll cells to form oxaloacetate, which is then converted to malic acid, which is also a four carbon compound. CO2 is therefore stored in these cells in malic acid, which accumulates at night in the vacuoles. During the day, when stomata are closed, malic acid moves to the chloroplasts, where it is decarboxylated back to phosphoenol pyruvate. This reaction supplies the CO2 needed for the Kelvin cycle. If we compare C4 plants to CAM plants, we see that the C4 pathway separates photosynthesis in different cells. CO2 fixation occurs in mesophyll cells by PEP carboxylase, and the Kelvin cycle occurs in the bundle C cells. Whereas in CAM plants, both CO2 fixation and Kelvin cycle occur in the same cells, but are separated temporarily. CO2 fixation occurs at night, while the Kelvin cycle happens during the day.